No training is required. It's part of the dog's genetic makeup. If I own one of the garden breeds and I leave it by itself in the house for a short time and then come back, the dog will still be pleased to see me, but will pick something up. And won't want to share it with me. That's because it's a garden breed, and garden breeds were developed for their ability not to want to share things with everyone else. If I'm a bad person, I break into your house when you're out to steal things, and you have a retriever, your retriever will help me carry a few things out. <laughs> have this as well. Here, there's this. You've forgotten this. My garden group say, stay away from that. Don't you touch that. So to train a dog, you have to understand the genetics of the dog. And there's a book that I can recommend. It's simply called One Thousand Dog Breeds. And the author is Desmond Morris. That book will give you a brief history of the genetic code of over 1,000 breeds of dog. So most of our training in the UK started with military training, gun dog training, and then developed into competitions and then developed into companion dog training. And most training in the USA also started with gun dog type training, hunting training, military training, and then developed into a different form of competition. 在美國的話呢,一開始大多數也是去訓練獵犬,因為這也是為了軍事方面使用,然後呢他們也訓練比賽犬,只是這個方法,方法或者是目的比較不一樣。In the 60s to be recognized as a dog trainer, in either the USA or in the UK or anywhere else in the world, you had to compete with a dog to show everyone and compare yourself against all the other trainers but to show everyone that you were a good dog trainer. That's how it was done. So it's no surprise that still to this day, all around the world, if I walk into a dog training class, you will not see pet dogs, companion dogs being trained for their owners. You'll see owners learning competition exercises. 所以一直到今天我們如果去看這個訓練狗的課程,還是會發現說呢,大家在訓練的時候並沒有考慮到說這個狗是不是從物犬,然後是不是要做我們的伴侶的狗,他們的方法都是用來訓練比賽犬的那
发现说训练狗的时候，大家都会在手上拿着食物来当做刺激。That might be one way to get the dog to look at you in the style that's required for competition. But do you really want your dog to walk down the road looking at your hand? If we say it's to compete in the style that's required for competition, but do you really want your dog to look at your hand looking at your hand? If we say it's to compete in the style that's required for competition, but do you really want your dog to look at your hand looking at your hand? If we say it's to compete in the style that's required for competition, but do you really want your dog My dogs know what my hands look like. They don't have to stare at them when we go for a nice walk. If you want to take the dog out for a nice walk, why would you use food to reward it when surely the walk is the reward? 如果我们带狗出去散步的话，为什么要拿食物当做它的奖励呢？其实散步本身就已经是它的奖励了。Before I go any further, let me again say there's no right or wrong way of training a dog. My way is different. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be here. 那我还是要再补充说明一下，我们训练狗的方式没有所谓正确与否，但是我的方法的确跟人家不一样。那如果不是这样的话，今天你们也不会邀请我来演讲。So the thing to avoid is writing down the way to train dogs is how John Rogerson does it because he's come from a long way away and he must be good. It has to make sense to you. 所以哦，大家绝对不要因为说认为野兰的和尚会念经，那 Rogerson 先生既然这么大老远来，他讲的一定都对，所以我赶快写下来。请你们千万不要这样做，你们一定要信服我所讲的理论才把它写下来。So I'm not here to present the right way to train the dog. I'm here to present my way of training the dog. 所以我在这边呢，不是要跟大家介绍训练狗的正确方法，而是要告诉你们我训练狗的方法。So there are two things that will help us to understand the dog, and it's two different types of behaviour that are in every dog that you own. Two separate types of behaviour. 好，我们要了解狗的话呢，有两个重点哈，就是呃，狗会呈现的两种行为。One type is called genetic. It's sometimes called innate, programmed in at birth. 种呢是呃跟基因有关的，也就是它内在天生的行为。Unchangeable, inflexible, you cannot change it. 这是不能改变的，没有弹性的。There's a second type of behavior which we're more interested in, and that's called learned behavior, learned from living with a person in an environment, learned by going to training classes. Learned by going out into the environment, so it's a product of everything that the dog learns through its five senses. 那第二种呢，是我们比较感兴趣的，就是学习而来的行为。那学习而来的话呢，就是他跟谁一起生活，或者是他去上了什么样的训练课程，他所遭遇到的环境，他从这当中学来的。And as you'll see later, that behavior, everyone here has the ability to change. 那这第二种呢，学习来的行为是我们今天在座的每一个人都有能力去改变的。So the owner says to me, I have a Maltese Terrier, and when I leave it by itself, it tears things to pieces in the house. We know that the dog was not bred to do that, so it must have learned it, which means we can change it. 所以，如果今天有一个狗主人告诉我说他养马尔济斯，但这个马尔济斯每次在家里哦，就会把它咬到的东西全部都呃把它撕成一片一片，好把家里弄得一团糟。那我们知道马尔济斯的天性不应该是这样的，这一定是他学来的行为，所以我们可以改变这种行为。Teaching a dog to come back to you when it's off the lead is remarkably easy because we've never developed any breed of dog to run away from us, and if we had. They'd run away years ago, and we wouldn't have them now. 
再来呢，就是讲到说，如果我们要训练一只狗啊，在你没有绳子牵它的时候，它也愿意回来的话，这一定是很容易的。为什么呢？因为我们人类呃养狗这么长的几千年的历史来讲啊，我们从来没有刻意去培养一种我们养养完以后会自己跑掉、不愿意回来的狗。所以呢，要狗回来应该是很容易的。如果真的有那种我们故意把它养成不会回来的狗的话，它早就离开我们，永远也不会回来啊。So I want you to imagine that an owner walks into my dog training class. This is just so you can visualize it. An owner walks into my dog training class, and they walk in with a breed of dog called a Doberman, a Derby breed. And when they come into the class, They say to me, "I understand that you can help me with problems. There's a few things about my dog I'm not happy about." 好，所以我跟大家讲一个例子哈。今天呢，我们在上训练课的时候，假设有一个饲主，然后他进来，他告诉我说，他呃养了一只杜宾，然后他说，呃，杜宾当然是护卫犬，大家知道。然后他说，这个杜宾有一些行为是我很不喜欢的，希望你能够帮我矫正它。So I ask him, "What makes you unhappy about your dog?" And remember, I'm a dog trainer. And he says, "Well, the first thing is, his nose has grown too long. I prefer, I prefer to look like a boxer." 好，那我就问他说：“你到底是不满意他什么地方呢？”然后他就讲说：“啊，这个杜宾哦，他的鼻子太长了。我比较喜欢说他像那个犬狮犬一样，鼻子短短的。And his coat is far too short, and it's black. I would like it lighter and longer.” 他又讲说，他的这个脚掌啊太小了，然后居然又是黑色的。我喜欢它是不同颜色哈，可以大一点。Also, he's grown a little bit too big. I didn't want him that big. I prefer a miniature dog. 然后他又讲说，这个杜宾狗这么大，我不想要大狗，我想要那种很小很可爱的迷你狗。So we would hopefully all agree, as a dog trainer. I can't change that dog for him. Even if you're a veterinarian, I don't think you could change the dog for him. 好，那大家要记得我是训练师哈。那他刚刚讲的这些问题呢，身为训练师，我应该是没有办法改变的。就算他去找兽医，我觉得大概也没办法改变。If he didn't want the dog that big with that coat that had that appearance, he should have bought one in the first place. 如果他不喜欢这么大的狗，不喜欢它的毛色，然后不喜欢它的鼻子的话，他一开始就不应该找杜宾狗啊。That's the first mistake people usually make. The reason we have so many abandoned dogs around the world is people made a poor choice. 所以我觉得在世界上各地哦都会有这个弃养犬呢。其实很多的原因都是因为一开始的选择做错了。Forget that. Now a second person comes into my training class. And they also happen to have a Doberman, and they also say there's a few things about my dog I'm not happy about, so I'm here for you to help me. 好，然后我再讲另外一个例子哦，一样又有一个饲主来找我，然后他也说他有杜宾狗，然后他说他有一些事情不满意，要请我帮忙。So again, I ask this person, what is it you're unhappy about? And he says, well, he's just reached ten months of age, and when someone walks past my house. He runs to the window and barks. Wow! I ask him where he's unhappy. He says, "This dog is just a year old, and when someone walks past my house, he runs to the window and barks." Wow! Here's what you're going to find surprising. Here's what you're going to find surprising. I can no more change that behavior than I can change the color in the dog's coat or the length of its nose. It's genetic. 我相信大家听到这一点都不意外哈，因为杜宾是护卫犬。那就像我前面所讲的，它的毛色或者是它的鼻子太长啊，这个都不是我能解决的问题，这个是它的本性。那一样，它会护卫，所以它会叫也是本性。Genetically driven behavior cannot be changed, but it can be controlled by training. 所以这是因为基因写在他脑袋里面的这种东西哦，那他呈现这个行为，我们不能够改变，可是我们可以控制。